Hey everybody, uh, here we are. Uh, to take another stab at Micah, we're going to get into chapter 4 today. You know when you're uh, in movies, plays, things like that, uh, when they're dark plays, when they're or dark movies, uh, every once in a while you need to have some relief. And there's a term for that. It's either comic relief or light relief. So maybe the movie's very dark and it's always at night and it's always tense, etc. Then somewhere in there, boom, it's daytime, it's bright, it's relaxed. That's to give you, the audience, a little relief. Uh, this has been a tough movie to watch. Uh, or comic relief, maybe uh, some humor comes in to break the tension. Well, we're going to get some light relief here in Micah chapter 4. It's been very dark, it's been very troubling. The Lord is coming to pronounce judgment on his people and his wrath is going to flow out upon his people and we pray Lord in wrath remember mercy uh, so anyway chapter 4 begins a, a little bit of what I'll call light relief and it begins like this it shall come to pass in the last days Ooh, last days what's that when is that has it happened yet I mean uh, a lot of times we hear to the end of the age and that may have been when Jesus died on the cross that was the end of the Old Testament the Old Covenant the old contract that was made with Abraham and continued through David to Jesus whose sacrifice on the cross it says this is the new covenant in my blood when we take the communion cup that's what we say. This is the new covenant in my blood. The new covenant, the new contract, the new testament is made right there on the cross. And that was the end of an age. But this is not the last age because we're still going on, right? We're still moving forward. We're in what you could call the church age. Back at the time of Abraham, God made a great statement and I will. And we've emphasized that when God says, I will, he does it. And fast forward, just before the cross, Jesus says to the disciples, I will. I will build my church. And we enter this church age, which has purpose and meaning in it, which we see at, uh, in the book of Acts and other places where Jesus is giving commands to his disciples to do something. And what is that? It is to bring the gospel to all the nations, all the tribes, all the family groups. And then when that, uh, uh, what's going on? Let's take a look at how the spread of the gospel to the nations is tied in with the last days. Acts 1.8. Uh, I shouldn't have told you that because I, I could ask you, what are the last words of Jesus and most people would go to the cross uh, it's finished something like that the last seven words of Jesus were to the uttermost parts of the earth that's the last seven words he uttered he was with his disciples after his resurrection and just before his ascension and he says to them when the Holy Spirit comes you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth last seven words and, and you'll be my witnesses to the ends of the earth everybody Acts 1 11 right after that Jesus is in Acts 10 Jesus ascends he's gone he he, he is taken up into heaven and angels come and say men of Galilee why do you stand looking into the sky this same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way as you have seen him go into heaven so he's coming back there's a um, an event where Jesus will return in John 14 3 Jesus says I will come back we live in hope we live in hope that Jesus will return make all things right and 
eventually we will be with him in eternity. So Jesus clearly links the proclamation of the gospel and the end of the age. In Matthew 18 20 when he gives the great commission to go to and make disciples of all nations he finishes with surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And it's not the age that ended at the cross. This is a new age that has been instituted, a new covenant, a new contract, a new testament. And Jesus links the spreading of the gospel, making disciples to all nations with that. I'm always with you to the end of the age. He leaks the final thing, the last day, the end of the age to the, the uh, proclamation of the gospel, the spreading of the gospel to all nations. The last days will con culminate with Jesus' return. Here's a selection of scriptures, if you would. When the Lord Jesus comes, when our Lord comes with all his holy ones, that hasn't happened yet, the coming of our Lord, the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command and the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. He will send his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect from the four winds concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and being gathered to him. We wait for the blessed hope the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ and so we will be with the Lord forever encourage one another with these words so we live in hope we believe that our Lord is coming again and, and this will happen when well let me see if I can put it together here I got to kind of skip over here a little bit and, and uh, two views on this by the way there's a um, a millennialism which says there will be an event that ends when Jesus comes but that will be it he will take his elect up to heaven for eternity uh, there'll be the the damned will be damned and that will be it there'll be no more heaven or earth there'll be no more earth there will be heaven with the elect in heaven. That's amillennial, millennial. It's easy for you to say. Amillennialism. And, and uh, ah, like uh, uh, ag ah, agnostic. Gnostic means knowing. Agnostic means I don't know. Um, and, and, and so forth and so on. Things like that. But amillennialism is a, a not a literal period, but is figurative of the godly influence of the church. After Christ's return, there's a direct move to eternity in heaven. And then there's what's called the premillennialism, uh, a literal period on earth in which Jesus Christ reigns over the world as a righteous king. And, and, and I kind of go with that one myself because of the Old Testament, because of scriptures like the one we have in, in Micah that says in the last days, these things will happen and we have not seen them happen yet and so it has to happen sometime and, and that's where we get this uh, idea of a millennial kingdom a thousand year reign of Christ on earth from Jerusalem okay so when will it take place well Romans 11:25 says Israel has experienced a hardening in heart until the full number of Gentiles has come in and so all Israel will be saved so all the Gentiles who are going to be saved have to be saved again a link to the preaching of the gospel to all nations that's going to happen the fullness of the Gentiles has to they have to come in okay Matthew 24 the disciples have asked when the temple will be torn down and what will be the sign of Jesus coming at the end of the age and Jesus replies that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations and then the end shall come so it hasn't happened yet 
the gospel still has to go out and be preached to all the nations, all the tribes, all the family groups of the world, all the languages of the world. The big deal with Wycliffe, who's, that's their goal, is to translate the Bible into, into all the uh, cultural languages of the, of the world. Acts 1, verses 6 to 8, the, the, the disciples asked, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus answers, um, it's not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the seven last words to the uttermost parts of the earth. Well, Peter at Pentecost said the outpouring of the Holy Spirit there fulfilled the prophecy in Joel 2.28. In this prophecy, Joel, after predicting the outpouring prophecies, the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. Is this what we're looking for at the end? In Acts 15 and a little bit of Amos, James commenting on reports by Peter, Peter and Paul about God's work among the Gentiles says, the prophets are in agreement with this report as it is written. After this, after the Gentiles are saved, I will return and rebuild and restore David's fallen tent, that the remnant of men may seek the Lord and all the Gentiles who bear my name, says the Lord. Oh. So there's this link between the spreading of the gospel to all the nations and the final things, the end, the return of Jesus. What's this all about, the spreading of the gospel to all the nations? Well, do we remember what we said is God's ultimate plan, Numbers 14:21. Uh, Indeed, as I live, the whole earth will be filled with my glory. That's what's going on. And that's what has been given to the church to do. That's where we are now. We're bringing the gospel of salvation, of eternal life, of Jesus Christ and his death and resurrection and his saving grace to the nations. And when that's complete, he will return. And I believe reign for a thousand years from Jerusalem. Uh, like our passage in Micah says, let's read again just for the fun of it. Okay, in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the Lord, of the house of the Lord, shall be established as the highest mountain. There's this big deal with mountains too, Mount Hermon and some of the old uh, uh, powers and principality stuff, but that's a, a rabbit hole I'm not going to go down. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and it shall be lifted up above the hills and people shall flow to it. People are going to stream to Israel, to Jerusalem, because the Lord will be there and he will teach. It says, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between many peoples and shall decide disputes for strong nations far away. He's going to settle disputes. So if it's Egypt, or I'm making this up, if it's um, Iran, okay, the Lord's going to settle those disputes. And he will do it uh, for, for all these nations. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. And nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. We are looking for this great and righteous rule of our King Jesus for a period of a thousand years. And that's when this will take place. Once the gospel has been proclaimed to all the families of the earth. Wow. I love it. I really love it. Does it happen to these people in Micah? Mm -mm. No. Listen where this goes after that. Um, ba -ba -ba. But they shall every man under his vine and fig tree dwell, no, and no one will make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. For all the peoples walk, each in the name of its own God, but we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. That's the great day of the Lord. The, the millennial kingdom is going to be fabulous. But the Lord shall rescue Zion. When? 
In that day, declares the Lord, I'll assemble the lame and gather those who have been driven away and those whom I have afflicted. The lame. I'll make the remnant of those who were cast off a strong nation. And the Lord will reign over them in Mount Zion from this time forth and forevermore. So we're still there or, or, or we're in that millennial kingdom up to this point. And you, O tower of the flock, hill of the daughter of Zion, to you shall it come, the former dominion, dominion shall come kingship for the daughter of Jerusalem, still in the last times. Now, why do you cry aloud? Is there no king in you? Has your counselor perished? That pain sees you like a woman in labor? Writhe and groan, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in labor, for now you shall go out from the city and dwell in the open country. You shall go to Babylon. There you shall be rescued, and there the Lord will redeem you from the hand of your enemies. So they're going into captivity. Uh, Jerusalem into captivity at Babylon and there the Lord will rescue them. There he, he, he will keep them. Now many nations are assembled against you saying let her be defiled. Let her gaze upon Zion from afar. Okay, But they do not know the thoughts of the Lord nor do they understand the bad guys. The, the Babylon, the Assyrians, they do not know the thoughts of the Lord. They do not understand his plan that he has gathered them as sheaves to the threshing floor. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I'll make your horn iron, I'll make your boot hoofs bronze, and shall you shall beat in pieces many peoples, and shall devote their gain to the Lord, their wealth to the Lord of the whole earth. So Jerusalem, Israel are going into either captivity are going into captivity or dispersion, and the Lord will be their refuge in these terrible times. And the people who are doing this, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, are God's instruments of his wrath. But he says, they don't know my plans and they're gonna, they're gonna pay for what they're doing too. So, where are we in all this? Okay, we're in what's called the church age. And it is our responsibility to proclaim the gospel to every creature to go and make disciples of all nations teaching them and baptizing them in the name of the Holy Spirit and the Father the Son and in Jesus' wonderful grace you know I was reading something uh, last night Stephanie and I are doing a uh, devotional I guess you call it it's a Lenten devotional Paul trip and, and he made the point that everything that God has done in his providential care from the very beginning was to bring Jesus to that awful cross so that you and I could have redemption, salvation, cleansing, and hope. So. The question still begs, what happens to Israel? I mean, if, if you remember, or maybe, well, we didn't quite get there and, and everything, I'll review that at another point. But Israel was set aside. Uh, John chapter one, uh, verse 12 around there somewhere, it says that, and he, the word, Jesus, came unto his own, and his own did not receive him. But unto those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the sons of God. Sons of God. It was there that Israel was set aside as the channel of redemption. And the church was now the new channel of redemption. And Israel was just set aside. Well, what happens to them? Well, in that day, the Lord will restore and rebuild the tent of David, it says in order that the remnant of men will seek the Lord. And he says, I will plant Israel in their own land, never again to be uprooted from the land I have given them. So they're gonna be brought back. 
Hosea, for the Israelites will live many days without king or prince or without sacrifice. They haven't been able to make the sacrifice. It has to be done in the Holy of Holies within the temple. There's no temple. Okay. Afterward, the Israels will return and seek the Lord their God and David their king, and they will become trembling to the Lord and to his blessings in the last days. Isaiah this is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Ezekiel. Ezekiel sees a vision of a valley full of bones, scattered and dry. Can these bones live? As he watches the bones gather into bodies and become living flesh and blood people, the Lord explains, these bones are the whole house of Israel. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live. Them bones, them bones, them dry bones. The Lord promises, this is Jeremiah, the time is coming when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts, and they will know me from the least of them to the greatest. Scripture teaches that the nations will seek the Lord in a revived Israel. Isaiah Again, in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established and all the nations will stream to it. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The nations will rally to him. Wow! Right now, it's not like that. The nations are trying to destroy him, are, are, are trying to... To, to really eliminate God from, from the cultural thinking. But remember, as surely as I live, says the Lord, all the earth will be filled with my glory. Trust in God. Do good. Cultivate relationships with people of faith. The times are hard right now. They may get worse. It may be like Micah's day where the Lord is bringing his judgment on this nation. But remember, we are a people of hope and the Lord will rescue us there. He will rescue his remnant. We can guarantee that we're safe in the rock of his refuge. So run to the Lord, stream to him like all the nations will in the end. Do it now and find his grace. Heavenly Father, we have heard of your fame and we stand in awe of your deeds. Repeat them in our day. In our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. God bless you.